And okay. Hi there. Hey, Welcome Rose. to another episode of Casting Notes from Rose and Kim. This is Hi, Kim. everybody. Hi, that's Kim Swanson. She's a casting director from Los Angeles. And I'm Rose Rose and a casting director here in Florida. How are you? I'm dandy by golly. How are you, gorgeous? <laughs> that being said, we're both from the Midwest. So if you got <laughs> the dandy by golly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that brings me back that's so funny <laughs> i am so glad i could make your day i try i try so hard <laughs> but i want to i i have a great guest for us today you're gonna love her um and she's doing some really cool things right now i met her years ago at a film festival and and i think we're gonna talk a little bit about that that genre uh tara are you there oh, hello, hello. Here, Hi, tara. Tara. hello ladies. <laughs> welcome to the show we're glad thank you so you much for here. having me yes yes tara is a new york actor and producer and probably more things that you can discuss and anyway, thanks for coming. Good to see Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm also from the middle, well, not even the middle of this country. I'm from Manitoba, Canada. So, right. We, yes. Hello. Hello. I know. We were talking about snow. And I know. You know snow. So, and we don't anymore. We don't anymore. <laughs> I never particularly really loved it as a kid, except like once a year, you might have a snow day at school. <laughs> but that was it. So <laughs> Now that I was my extent of love but, for the cold. But anyway, how have you been? Oh, I mean, minus the madness of the past year, which it is what it is. Uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm good, thank you. Yeah, I was able to actually work during the pandemic, which is something I'm so incredibly grateful for because it's been, you know, it's been a trying year for everyone. Um, but I was able to, to, I got lucky, I was able to, produce and, and act in a pilot that was shot here in New York. It was the first or one of the first, I think it was the first, but I don't want to say that. It was definitely one of the first pilot productions to go up in the middle of the madness. Wow. So cool. Had to be so challenging. Yeah. <laughs> no, it really was because there were things that we just had never experienced before. I, I also produced it besides starring in it. And you know, you've never had to work to get SAG after approval like that. You know, you've never had to meet COVID safety rules. You've never, you don't even know what COVID safety rules are. And, and there was no one to help us because no one had done it. So it was endless hours of us trying to figure out what tests could work because there were, you know, conditions like the actors and the crew had to be tested and then you had to be on set within 72 hours. But at that time in New York City, there were no tests that you could get the results back within 72 hours. So it was so tricky. And we would call the union who as an actor, I was so grateful. They were really making it hard for a production to start. But as a producer, I was like, give me something like what test can we use? And I mean, I was even speaking to, they'll remain nameless, but someone that was involved in a Michael uh, Mann film that that I was trying to get from them on the West Coast, like what tests did you guys use? And then as soon as you were involved in those kinds of tests, on a side note, the cost of your your production oh, huge. gets drastically changed. Right, right, <laughs> right. And you went into that not really knowing that that was going to be a factor, I'm sure, because your things were in place before. The, yeah, it's hard. Right. It, it was, it was, it was tough. And there, were, you know, by the time we were supposed to start filming. And we had such a wonderful cast in place too. You know, it, it was a good time to reach out to friends that, that everyone wanted to work and everyone was in town because you didn't travel. So Richard Kind and Jessica Hecht and, and Bobby Burke and Bill Sadler and Chika Okonkwo, we had this amazing cast. Even when we spoke to SAG, they were like, how'd you get that cast? <laughs> but, and they were ready to go. And then as we're waiting to see if we had approval from the union, we, we hit the deadline of like, we have to either tell everyone we're filming today or push. And it was the hardest phone call to push, but I called them and then, and we'll be, we called them. And then we found out the day that we were supposed to start filming that we had been approved. 
So we called everyone back and said, okay, this is crazy. <laughs> and we filmed in 72 hours. And I'm just so grateful. Our cast and crew, our crew was tiny. Like in between shots, I'm, you know, I'm holding a reflector. I've got makeup brushes in my jeans. I'm there when I'm not acting. I'm the whole, our crew, our producers, our director, everyone, our, our DP. It was a, it took a tiny little bit of village, but we did it. It was great. You have oh to run God. really mean and lean with a COVID shoot for sure. Oh my gosh. Now I'm curious about your producing, like how, like what prompted you to get into that? How did you get into that? Is that oh. something you, that was that always your goal or tell us about that? Well, actually the first thing I ever produced, that's when I met you Rose. That was a, it was a film called Detours and I met Rose at a film festival in Florida and how I got into production. I had never wanted to do it to be honest with you. I'm not someone that can ask anyone for money ever that's never going to happen on my production side of it but I had met a producer who came to see a play of mine and he said Tara you're not 20 you're not a huge name if you want to see people see your work and they should you have to start producing your own work and if you want to work as an actor start producing and I was like Whoa. I was so scared because I didn't even know what that meant but I had worked with this wonderful writer producer Mara Lessman on a film called Surviving Family and she had asked me, do you want to produce my next film, Detours? And the great thing is she didn't need the budget. She had that, but I helped with, you know, cast and crew and everything, the soundtrack, just everything beyond the money. So we, what she needed from me and what I could offer was just this perfect combination. And we worked so well together. And then I, I loved it. I loved that creative aspect of it. I loved, you know, I'm on set filming a scene and I'm, I'm on the phone with Richard Kind's agent in LA in between takes, you know, it was like all this madness. And then I like to multitask. So I realized that if I, if I want people to see my work, I have to get more involved. And I think that's so important for actors, especially these days. Oh, and, and that's just genius. I mean, I think, I think from that, I think I would tell every actor to get, get involved, get to film festivals, talk to other people in the business and, you know, and watch all this free content that not only us, but everybody's producing right now about the business. It's so interesting, but I'm glad you took the advice and you're running with it. And that's yeah. amazing. Well, obviously it's paying off. So you mentioned the film festival. So um, let's talk about film festivals a little bit. Like, so do you, have you gone to a lot of film festivals? Do you have like preferences as to like, how do you find what film festival, like but because obviously you found the film festival that where you met Rose, but yeah. so how do you decide what film festivals and things to work with? You know, I think that you have to really look at what you're presenting, what it is that you want to sell. I mean, we knew that a film like Detours would never get into Sundance. So we didn't even apply to Sundance. It wasn't, you know, political. It wasn't, it, it had, it didn't have a Sundance feel to it. So you have to, for starters, figure out what is your content and what is it that you're trying to sell know enough about the festivals, educate yourself, read about them to know where to apply and then apply, apply. And that's another thing that's so important when you're making a film is that all costs money. So you have to think about that on the on the back end of it. And then also negotiate, you know, we were lucky. They they brought out, I don't know that I'm supposed to say this, but whatever, they brought out me and, and Paul Servino for, he was in detours as well at that festival in Florida. So, you know, a lot of times the festivals will, if you've got, a certain caliber of actor's name, they'll fly out your cast, they'll put them up. They want people involved like that. So as a filmmaker, it's important to know that and also approach them and, uh, and, and push for that. And that doesn't mean it's gonna help your film do well, to be very clear. It just means that, you know, it's, it's, they want them there and it's good to go. And even as an actor, I think if you can't, you know, you have to pay for your own way. I think that that's a, that's a good thing to do. And then go and talk to people, you know, let them invite them to see your, your film or your pilot or whatever it is that's mm -hmm. at the festival because work begets work. Mm -hmm. For sure. I mean, you well-spoken, honestly, that you really have to do it. You have to do your homework. Like you said, you have to know what lane you're in. I'm not telling you to stay in your lane, but now the question I have is, do you know that going into the project or do you know what festivals and things like that after you look at the finished piece? I mean, you can certainly have a dream idea ahead of time, but I think you 
Well, I think you would have some idea. Like if I was making something that was so relevant politically or socially that I knew this is a Sundance film or a South by Southwest film, you would have that and you would certainly hope that you could get into it. But, you know, the finished product certainly might help uh, make that decision for you. Sundance is actually a festival I've never been to and it's my dream. It's a bucket list. I have like two things on my bucket list. I can't even think of what the other one is, but the uh, my bucket list is to go to the director's lab for Sundance. As, as an actor, I would love to do that. It seems like a great thing to do. Oh and be gosh. on a panel, right? Make it a big, make it a big list. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the stars, right? Right, you gotta there, raise There's them. also now really great festivals for TV pilots, like the pilot that we shot. I can't discuss which festival, but I'll be able to soon. We are debuting, premiering at a very wonderful television, um, and like it's like a series festival where you go and present uh, television pilots and we're so excited about that. So it's wonderful now because there are so many different kinds of festivals that you can take, whether it be a TV show or a film project too. Now, yeah, they're very laser targeted. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. you can tell us the yeah. name of your series though, right? Yes, it's called Hudson Falls. Oh, that's nice. fantastic. We'll, yeah, we'll that's watch cool. for it for sure. Yeah, yeah and yeah. I think, you know, with, with festivals, like a lot of people don't realize that you know, one of the big things about festivals, is the idea is to get distribution, right? right. Yeah. It's not about just having people come and see your thing. It's about having the right people come to see your thing. And each festival focuses on who they bring to the festival, who potentially may, you know, purchase your product you now. And that's what you really focus in on the, the festival that will have the right people for your type of project. You know, if you, if it's a, it's a festival that, that brings in somebody who loves horror films, and yours is this little rom-com. Well, the people coming looking for horror films aren't going to buy your product, right? So no, exactly. I have a I have a friend, someone that I've coached actually. Her goal was to get into a certain festival, and she decided she would write her own short. And it was as she was writing that short, it was really geared towards that festival. And once again, this is a young, very talented actress, and you know she's producing she decided to last minute pull out of directing it which was a good choice because it's just too much maybe for the first film but again it's so easy now especially with these iPhones that you can really film anything on and work begets work like I said and people want to work especially right now so just you know if you're an actor and you're listening to this write something and then bring your friends into it you can get you know if you have to if you're hiring SAG actors you'd be surprised how you can get waivers or the amount that an actor would work for, if it's a good project, it's, you know, I think people are a lot of times afraid to try. And I just would say, do it. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. That That is absolutely true. So you're an acting coach, right? I am too, yes. And you're doing I love on that. Zoom now? What's that? On Zoom, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, that's great. We'll, okay. we'll drop your your handles and all that um, into, the, into the box here, whatever. <laughs> Wherever this all is, yeah. Yeah, I know, whatever. The little description thing. <laughs> hey, Tara, I cannot thank you now. enough. You are been a wonderful and interesting guest and I feel like you've offered a lot of good information for our viewers. So thank you it's so much. so for fun and I think it's just wonderful for actors. Even like, I, I love that you guys are doing this. It's really, it's like a, it's gold for us. So thank you. No, well, you're welcome. Thanks. And make are. sure you follow and subscribe us and, yes. and like and subscribe Tara's. Yep. Tara, I am sorry for the, the no. mispronunciation. <laughs> I, I got that though. Anyway, it's Tara Westwood and follow her and Kim and myself. And thank you everybody for watching. Thank you.